So thank you very much for this invitation to present a forward look on the global virus network. How can we envision the future of epidemics and pandemics? And how really this uh, COVID-19 crisis has only emphasized the need of organizations such as the Global Virus Network and how we can be partners and to help uh, secure a better future. I'm Christian Brechot, I'm an MD, PhD. I'm a professor at the University of South Florida and president of the Global Virus Network. I'm a former president of the French NIH and also the Institut Pasteur with its international network and also vice president of a company, the Institut Mérieux. So the first slide really only reiterates what we are all of us aware of. We have been facing over the past 20, 30 years, a number of uh, emerging or re-emerging infectious disease. And I don't have time to name all, all of them, but we know about obviously HIV, but then more recently, Ebola, Zika, Chikungunya, and so on. And now, clearly, the pandemics due to COVID-19. So the question is really, how can we anticipate? How can we be pre better prepared? How can we react? How can we build for the future? And then it's about education, training, talent development. Just the, the next slide is really to remind you uh, that now we are really talking of global and one health. What does it mean? About 70% of uh, emerging infectious disease are due to transmission from animals or viruses, animal viruses. So this is why we call this global and one health. And it's about the interactions of humans with the animals and with the environment. And all of this clearly in the context of climate change, but also of the uh, growth in the urban areas, deforestation, human migrations, and again and again, climate change. Now, before coming to um, a Global Virus Network and to the existing hurdles, it's fair to emphasize that over the past few years, and especially after the Ebola crisis, we did have an improvement in global health governance. I, I will not detail, but we have a number of consortia of international institutions to really work on, such as Gavi, on providing vaccines, a uh, foundation for innovative new diagnostic. It's about diagnostics. And more recently, in red, the Coalition for Epidemic Preparedness Innovation. This is a consortium between government, foundations, academic, industrial partners to really prepare in advance stocks of vaccines so as to better react. So we do have a lot of, uh, again, mechanism and institutions uh, which have been uh, set up exactly for, for the fight against pandemics. Uh, also, WHO clearly needs reorganization, but uh, it has created networks, such for, for example, the what we call the Global Outbreak Alert and Response Network, so-called GOARN, which is really about surveillance and alert uh, network. So the next slide shows what is the positioning of Global Virus Network and what do we need. So on the upper part of the slide and the lower part of the slide, you have the existing organizations, WHO, UN, national governments, a number of non-governmental organizations, philanthropists, and on the lower part of the slide, the uh, existing networks, such as, for example, the International Network of Pasteur Institute, the Fondation Merieux. But still, what we are really lacking is a, a merging of the best scientists, of the best experts, 
to really ensure the transition between on the left surveillance, networks for surveillance, such as the CDCs, the GOARN of WHO I just mentioned, and on the right part, development and dissemination. That is, when you have a vaccine, you have a treatment, you have a diagnostic test, and the question is how to have this really uh, offered, I would say, to the whole world population. And the global virus network is in between. It really provides independent science solution. We have a problem. The surveillance has identified a virus. We need to deliver. How are we going to bridge between and how are we going to find solutions? And this is where the GVN, and this is what I'm going to show in a few minutes ahead, <coughs> this is where the GVN will offer merging again and again virus experts and really mechanistic analysis, solutions, and interface between surveillance and dissemination of, uh, again, treatment, vaccine, and diagnostic tests. So the next slide <coughs> is from an African proverb that I like, which really illustrates what the GVN is about. We want to go together. And it's not only a politically correct wording. It's really the truth. We are too much working in silos. We are too much working on a nationalistic basis. And this is what we want to fight against. So the Global Virus Network has been founded in 2011 by Bob Gallo, who is really the founder, also with Billy Hall. This is a non-profit global organization based in Baltimore. And this is really a coalition of the leading virology to advance discovery, advance knowledge, and develop drugs, vaccines, and also diagnostic tests. So the vision is really to prepare, to prevent, to contain. And the mission is really to reinforce basic and medical research. And this is from two major pillars, research, training and education, advocacy, and public education. So the GVN is a network of centers. Again, I'm not going to go into detail, but a center is a center of excellence in any country of the world. There is no politics. Uh, it's uh, just science driven. And uh, we have criteria, obviously, to recognize a GVN center. So this geographic map shows that this network really covers all over the world. And we are very proud of this. Uh, we have now 57 centers of excellence. We have what we call affiliated institutions. The GVN is present in 34 countries and in all continents. And it's really the merging, and I will repeat it this throughout this lecture is really the merging on all these individuals from all these countries, which really goes beyond the usual mode of research and communication. So why GVN? Well, GVN, if you, if you take from the left to the right, expert consultation. Well, we know that expertise, independent expertise, science-driven expertise is at the heart of the good decisions, be for politicians, be for industrials, uh, and uh, overall, I would say, in the context of public health. And we provide this expertise on any topic related to viruses. So it's really the depth of science, the speed in tackling new research problems. You see, WHO has very interesting scientific advisory board uh, and with bright scientists, and many institutions have. But only GVN has the capacity in one day to merge the scientists and to ask a specific question. What should we think about this? Uh, good example, for example, the recent announcements 
on the new vaccines. We leverage on individual strengths. It's about individual scientists. This is a cooperative network, as I have shown, and this is, I have said, a responsible, non-governmental, and independent. <clears throat> so this slide only illustrates that for all human viruses, which are on the top, you cannot read this, but we have centers which have the expertise. So whatever the questions we are asked, we can answer because of the community. So this is a small, a light team. Uh, there is also a, obviously a board of directors, which is very active and which is not shown here. And, uh, we, and we are just interacting with the 57 uh, centers of excellence. So at the end of the day, this is a huge organization, but which is really based on a very nimble, I would say, basic organization. So our programs are really about research, training and education, advocacy, public education and communications. And you have a listing, I will not go through all of it, obviously, uh, which illustrates that we have many activities, actually, on both research again, training and education, I will come back to this, and advocacy, expertise, education of the public, communication, which is obviously a key word. So regarding SARS-CoV-2, the GVN has been uh, clearly immediately at the forefront. And you see, this is a good example. We have a Chinese, uh, we have Chinese colleagues, members of GVN in China, and there is no politics, you see, there is no border. And so we got the information from our Chinese scientists and we got the, uh, the sequence, uh, the necessary data, and they actually uh, contribute uh, to our conversations. So the SARS-CoV-2 activities, it's about from left to right, biobanking. This is unique. You see, we have the unique capacity to collect samples in different geographical areas, in Europe, North America, Africa, and so on, and then to compare the results that you can obtain regarding diagnostic tests, regarding treatment in the future, regarding vaccine efficacy and biomarkers in different geographic, nutritional, environmental contexts, which have a great influence on the results. We have a series of educational activities with what we call the webinar series, which are extremely well attended. We have on our website what we call perspective. We really post statements. What is the knowledge on this or this topic? And we have created what we call the SARS-CoV-2 task force, which meet at regular time interval to share information about a new treatment, a new vaccine, a new diagnostic test. So uh, again, this just reiterates, uh, and I don't want to go into details, but the task force with representative for 30 GVN centers, the biobanking projects from, 16, from 16 centers of excellence and the research and clinical trials. Uh, for example, we have partnerships with companies which really uh, are providing a new treatment that they want to evaluate. It can go also for diagnostics, for disinfectants, which is a very important uh, topic, and again and again, effective therapy and new vaccines. So we have a lot of partnership with industry. You see, this is something which has been at the heart, I would say, of GVN legacy. Uh, from its uh, inspection. Uh, uh, we have in the board many members of the industry. And again, we have many activities with industry. And you have a listing of some of them which are ongoing. But this listing in, is, in fact, constantly expanding. Public education. Well, COVID-19 has only reinforced, but this is obvious for all of us, the need of communication, but of real communication, of science-based and independent communication. So this is 
what is listed here with the perspectives, with the webinars, with the blog that I have with uh, Lynn Manley, the vice president, newsletter each week, and uh, descriptions of centers and members spotlight to really highlight the main findings, the main activities of our centers. Advocacy, advocacy uh, for government, advocacy for international institutions, regulatory institutions. GVN should be viewed as a worldwide resource of the best experts again and again for to governments, international organizations, which seek advice, expertise and advice, two keywords nowadays. And you have the listing of many of our activities. Recently, we have created to reinforce this, what we call the GVN Viral Infection Preparedness Education and Resilience Advisory Group. And <clears throat> from left to right, why? Because as I have in further, I'm not going always to reiterate, we are leading the effort to combat uh, the spread of the pandemics. W what is the role of this advisory group? It's really to enhance science-based practice to prevent the transmission. So the objective is really to serve again as a worldwide resource for a diversity of institutions. And the advantage, well, we just again and again merge on a very nimble way with a simple mechanism, the best experts for all these activities. So we have uh, created in this context the GVN Corporate Partnership Program, which just means that it's not only to recognize that the industrial partners are very important to provide funding, which is obviously very important, but it's more to recognize that industrial partners are partners as such, including their research and development activities. And we can have centers which are really industrial centers. And so we have initiated this now about one year ago. You can see the first partners that we have identified, which means that we work with large companies, but also with uh, small or intermediate size biotech companies. It's really mutual benefit. It's uh, from left to right, it's about collaboration and research, education, thinking of strategy, long-term thought, visibility and impact, capacity to use the partner's logo, capacity to attend the annual and regional GVN meetings, and <clears throat> to contribute, I would say, to the overall <coughs> Uh, outbreak notification and evaluation and response briefing that we have at regular time intervals. Uh, this really also includes education and training. This has been at the heart of uh, GVN and we have at GVN a short course for emerging leaders in virology, one week intensive course uh, in Baltimore, which has led over the past few years to train a total of 90 scientists who are really alumni from all around the world in the past six years. Now we have what we call the GVN Academy program to really not only, it's not only a one shot training. It's not only a one shot fellowship. It's really a mentoring effort. And this mentoring effort uh, is being performed in uh, in collaboration between academic and industrial partners. And for us, this is very important, including providing guidance to increase entrepreneurship. It's really about the next generation of global leaders in virology. This is very important. <clears throat> COVID-19 has only demonstrated, further demonstrated, I should say, that we are lacking worldwide in the US as in Europe worldwide, we are lacking real virologists with a good training and education and a transdisciplinary education. The Global Virus Network is really at an inflection point. 
uh, building on what has been done uh, over the past few years, we are really very much increasing both our activities, our partnerships, and our visibility. And I have mentioned that we have we have these GVN international meetings. Obviously, we cannot have presently face-to-face -face meetings, but before COVID-19, each year, all GVN centers directors merge for two or three days uh, in a different place in Europe, in Asia, uh, in the US, it would be also in South America and, and also in Australia, uh, to really discuss and to really design the future of uh, these research activities. So we had an online meeting this year dedicated, only dedicated to COVID-19 for obvious reasons, and which has been extremely uh, powerful to update on the epidemic, uh, to really merge again the world renewed scientist and to really advocate that was one of the main conclusions for a unified and a multidisciplinary pandemic response, uh, merging the institutions, merging the networks to be better prepared for the, this pandemic, which obviously we hope and we are confident with, with, with end, but also to prepare for the next one. So the, there have been a number of conclusions uh, that I will not go into detail. Uh, but which have been uh, published and which really lead uh, uh, can act as guideline. And to close, I'd like always to show this slide, which has been taken in Sierra Leone during the Ebola crisis. It's about thank you science. And the Global Virus Network is really about offering worldwide, again, science, science-driven, independent, expertise, efforts of the best scientists to combat the pandemics. Thank you very much.